Hello, James Pogue here. This is the Yoga Top 40. Next entry into the chart, Torn by Natalie Imbruglia. Huge international hit in the 1990s, I understand. Now, there are many reasons why a song could be a huge international hit. A catchy chorus that people like to sing along to is undoubtedly one of them. Now, I would say that this song, one would do well to exercise caution in singing along with it. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. In the chorus, what does she say? Nothing's right, I'm torn. Now, there's another huge international hit. At least I think we could describe it as that. Slightly different type of international hit. That says something a little bit similar. And which also, I feel, is easy for human beings to relate to. And the hit I'm talking about is the Shakespeare play Hamlet. Hamlet, which, as I understand it, has more or less been in production constantly all around the world for hundreds of years. And the most famous line in this very famous play, what is it? To be. Or not to be. Hamlet, the sweet soliloquizing prince, he cannot make his mind up. He doesn't know what to do. One moment he's there, clear, resolute. Yes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And yes, I'm going to do it. And then we see him again. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, no. He cannot make up his mind. Now, this hit song, Nothing's Right, I'm Torn, and To Be? Oh, not to be. Perhaps there's something in this that makes them so perennially resonant and appealing towards human beings. Because maybe you've experienced it yourself, you know. There you are. It's the evening time. You think, yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to do, let's call it A. Yes, tomorrow I'm all about A. I'm going to see to A. I'm going to give it my devoted, dedicated attention. I'm going to be all about A. I'm going to finish A tomorrow. And we go to bed. And we sleep. Come the morning. Where has that person who was so resolute about task A gone to? Now the person that wakes up this next morning seems to have little interest in A, and next to no motivation in seeing to task A, and is much more interested in, well, the rest of the alphabet. Have you ever had such an experience? I have. I've also had the experience, and I think other people have told me they've had similar experiences, of these miraculous powers of which I'm constituted, like my sense powers, for example, being able to pull me in different directions. There I am, and I'm, let's say, I'm going into town to pick up a certain object I need. I'm walking towards the shop, but then, hmm, I smell some fresh frying food or some fresh cut fruit. Hmm, oh, I, I, I'm diverted. And then I start chatting with the person who is selling it. Oh, and then I see a friend, and I want to get diverted. Hmm, and my senses have pulled me in different directions. So this feeling of being a bit split, a bit fragmented, a bit torn, is not unknown to us as human beings. But when we feel split, do we feel how we really want to feel? Does it feel good? Nothing's right, I'm torn. No, it doesn't feel right at all, does it? Now, in Sanskrit, this phenomenon was recognized. Hamlet's been around for, you know, hundreds of years. Natty in Imbruglia's chorus has been popular for a few de couple of decades. But there's a Sanskrit proverb that has been reminding us of, uh, reminding human beings of this for millennia. This Sanskrit proverb, this Subhashita, this wise saying, it says, Manasye kam vachasye kam karmanye kam mahatmana 
Manasyanyat, Vachasyanyat, Karmanyanyat, Dhuratmana. What does it say? A human being, a person, a soul, who's an embodied soul, whose thought, word, and action are all one. That is a great soul. That person feels whole, full, expansive. When our thought, word, and deed are all unified, it feels great. But a person whose thoughts are in one place, whose words are expressing something different, and whose actions are something else again, that is a soul in torment. Is this true? Well, yes. Nothing's right, I'm torn. <laughs> we know that feeling when we're not all together. When we don't feel congruence, it doesn't feel how we'd really like to feel. And so yoga says, if we notice this, then we're empowered to do something about it. And this is why I would suggest it's maybe not the best idea to sing along to the Natalie Imbruglia torn chorus. Not that I want to condemn or criticize Natalie Imbruglia's song. <laughs> but yoga says once we've noticed that something's a problem, then let's orient our energy towards the solution. Let's make a different song. Everything's right, I'm whole. Yes. <laughs> Let me practice being fully here. Let me practice bringing all my parts into togetherness. My sense powers, my action powers, my thought, my word, my deed. Bring all of these things into togetherness. And so there's a song that I like to sing and part of it says, we're each a microcosm, a conglomeration of cells, a living cooperative functioning pretty well. And all the parts belong to one whole, isolated they won't stand. But when we come together, we begin to understand. When we come together, when we bring all parts of ourselves together, then we begin to understand who we really are and what we're really made of. And so this is the idea in yoga. Let me practice honestly, sincerely, wholeheartedly, bringing all parts of myself into togetherness. Let that be the type of mantra that I reaffirm. Let me reaffirm that togetherness, that cohesion. Let me practice it. And when I do practice, cohesion and integration and togetherness, wonderful things will happen, amazing things will happen, including will be brought more fully into the arena of my conscious awareness, those tendencies I have that would sentence me to further fragmentation. When I practice wholeness, I'll start noticing which parts of myself I've maybe be, been neglecting which parts of myself I've maybe left out in the cold. And so yoga is the antidote to division and splitness. It's about reconciling all parts of ourselves, including all parts of ourselves. It's the practical means to cultivate true individuation, to become a true individual whole being individual in the sense of a person who can no longer be divided, who is no longer divisible, who is functioning in their fullness, in their wholeness, and is then able to shine out and share an influence of greater inclusivity and harmonization. And we start right where we are. We look, hmm, where am I not as cohesive as I'd like to be? And what can I do about it practically? And then steadily, patiently, compassionately, I invite more and more wholeness, more and more togetherness. I gather all my parts and I invite myself as best I can into a state of balance, harmony and integration. That is the platform for skillfulness in all I do. And this is the yoga method. It's the antidote to division. 
and the means to practically, steadily, sincerely cultivate more harmony in the arena of human life. Thank you.